Hey, what up? What's going on? How are you doing? Alright, let me stop right there. I got something important to talk about. Alright, I thought about how I was going to make this video. I don't know if I should go on for like a long discussion, like talk about literally every single detail I think about. Uh, or if I should just make like a quicker version. And I decided I'll just do like a quicker one. I'll just try to make like a summary of what's going on. Because we don't have that much information, so... I don't want to go too far ahead of myself, you know, and like overreact. Um, so I'll try to like summarize what this video is about. I mean, if, if you haven't seen it already, you probably have if you play Kled and you follow like patch notes and stuff. But if you don't know what's going on, basically, well, basically overall, there's like a consensus that there's too much damage in the game. Uh, what I mean by that is like people on Reddit and like Twitter you know, the doomed areas are constantly saying, bro, there's so much damage in the game. You know, can't do anything. Everybody just one shots you. Um, we need another durability patch. That's like a big thing. Like, you remember the durability patch like a year ago? There's a lot of people saying like every single patch that came out after that was just reverting the durability patch. And we need another one. That's pretty much what people are saying. Now, Riot pretty much feels the same way. At least from what they're saying, it sounds like they think the same. They think there's too much damage in the game and they want to fix that. And they've been apparently trying to fix it with like recent changes. Um, but they're, they said there's a lot more that they're going to be doing. Um, okay, obviously you can have your own opinion on the durability patch. But in my opinion, the durability patch was easily, easily one of the worst patches that's ever been put in this game. I'm, and I'm not exaggerating. I've played this game forever since like the end of season three right i've played this uh and you know a lot of the times riot's balancing is like you know they go all over the place sometimes they make good decisions sometimes they make bad ones or unfun ones you know to me whatever but the durability patch and the mythic item rework like the item system rework those are the two only real like like genuinely bad patches in my opinion and i think that most of the game's problems now are like because of those two patches like there's been like irreparable damage done and like they're they're like constantly trying to like fix things but then they go back on it and like i don't know what's going on a, a lot of people complain about it um but some people don't some people think the dirty bloody patch was great and you know they want that shit back uh, anyways like i said riot feels kind of similarly there's too much damage in the game and there needs to be some kind of durability patch 2 or whatever um and, and one of the problems they have with the game in their words is i'll show this they posted this sorry for the you know the blinding light the white screen i don't know how to dark mode this website but this is the league of legends website they posted this gameplay thoughts two days ago so this is super recent this is from like uh one of the people on the bounce team, thoughts on the game time, snowball, durability. I'm not going to go through all this. All you really need to read from this, all we really need to talk about is this section right here. You know, durability. They've been seeing discussion about too much damage returning to the game. You know, durability patches like a year ago. You know, they agree damage is creeping up, whatever. It's pretty much all what I just said. Um, they said, you know, they tried to do some things to fix it, but they think one big problem and like that's like contributing to there being too much damage is that there's some champions in the game that build pretty much full damage or heavy damage that are not supposed to build full damage they're supposed to be more you know they're supposed to be balanced around bruisery builds and not bursting you instantly um so, and the examples they gave were these champs, Aatrox, Hecarim, Xin Zhao, Kled, and then Vi. It's just some examples. I'm guessing they mean more champs than this. But first of all, now, the reason that these champs, you see these champs build full damage, you know, or other champs like them, why you see them build full damage instead of Bruiser, is pretty obvious, and it's because of what we just said, the durability patch and the mythic item update. The way the game is balanced now is that percent damage percent hp damage or just damage that's based off of the enemy's health is all over the place like pretty much every meta carry and most meta carries 
either have like an insane amount of percent damage in their kit or HP focused like damage or they build it, you know, either from Blade of the Rune King, you know, ADCs with Lord Dominix plus cut down is huge. It's like every game. Um, yeah, I already said Bork. That's like a big, that's like one of the, those are the two biggest ones, I think. Bork and like Dom cut down. Uh, and then you have Bruisers that go Eclipse uh, slash Divine Sunder. You have Assassins that go Eclipse. Um, you know, Dustblade is like HP based. Um, even though it's missing HP, it's still, it's still, you know, attributes your HP to his damage. Uh, there's still Leandries everywhere. Demonic Brace is common. You know, and then just a lot of champs in general and like reworked champs just get percent HP damage all the time. Um, because ever since the durability patch, I mean, even before the durability patch, but they, they've just been balancing for percent damage a lot. So the problem with that kind of meta, which is where we are now and where we have been for a while, is that if you're, if you want to build quote unquote bruiser items, you know, what do you think of when you think of the bruiser items, bro? It's like Black Cleaver, Gore Drinker slash like Stride Breaker, you pick one of those, uh, you know, or maybe you're a Triforce Divine Champ, whatever. Sterix Gauge, you know, Shojin. The problem with all these items is that you just have a shit ton of HP. So this this most of the time works to your like detriment because you're gonna meet up with like a Divine Sunder Champ, a Bork Champ. You know, you're gonna walk into the ADC that has Lord Downs, cut down Bork, whatever, and you're just instantly gonna get shredded. Like, it's untankable damage, you know, or the mage has Leandre's Demonic, whatever. You're just running into stuff that's doing so much percent damage, you're just deleting yourself by stacking HP. And at the same time, you just sacrificed a bunch of damage that you could have built, because you were trying to build in a way where you would, like, you know, tank a little bit of damage. Which you're not gonna do, I can promise you that. And I don't think it's because there's too much damage in the game, there's just too much, there's too much percent damage, and there's too much haste in the game. There's, nobody has any cooldowns anymore either. So those two things combined make it so that there's no point of trying to like bruise your way through fights. You might as well just build damage yourself and just try to position better than them. You know, even if your champ is not as like built to do that kind of stuff, like, you, you know, you're just better off playing that way. Um, even though it's like, it's like higher risk reward um, because, you know, you're obviously squishy as fuck and like these champs are on melee range so you can just blow up without even being able to reach them but still it's like you're better off trying to do some shit like that um anyways it is just this list of champs is already interesting to me to begin with because it's just like a weird group of champs like aatrox for sure has been building full damage his best build has been full damage for like a while so he makes sense hecarim i think is a little bit weird to me because hecarim always has like gone different kinds of builds like he's always gone there's been assassin hecarim builds plenty of times maru mana dustblade type of builds and there's been bruiser hecarim divine sunder hecarim has been meta a million times you know full tank hecarim with chem tank was meta like hecarim builds all kinds of random shit all the time so i feel like he's like a weird example he always shifts builds depending on whatever is best in that moment you know in that meta um, Xin Zhao, whatever. The champ is worthless no matter what you build. I don't see any Xin Zhaos, and when I do, they all build differently. I've seen Gore strides in, I've seen full crit Xin Zhao a couple times, lethalities in, it doesn't matter. The champ has like his own problems. Uh, and then Kled will skip him for now, and then Vi. Vi, I think, is another weird one because in pro play, every Vi builds like pretty much tank or like bruiser tank, like cleaver into tank, and they just play like for the team. And I feel like a lot of people in solo queue and just like not pro play copy those kind of builds. The only times I see full damage Vi is like one tricks, like Vi one tricks, which is not that many people. So I feel like that was a weird example. And then now we'll talk about Kled. Kled is the weirdest one to me because in all my years of playing Kled, you know, I've played him since he came out. He's been he's been out for like seven years now. And of all the time I've played Kled, I don't think a full damage build has ever been like mainstream on him once. And then the only time heavy damage builds on him started becoming like slightly relevant is recently. Now I've, I've always built heavily into damage on Kled, even when the Bruiser builds were the best thing to do. Like there's been plenty of times where Bruiser Kled was the correct build, but I still build like towards damage just because I've always just felt like it, it fits his kit better. You know, he doesn't really have any like utility or like reason to be 
sustaining like long fights. You know, he's he's he honestly synergizes more with like burst damage, and then you remount. That's like your anti burst, so you don't get one shot. Um, so you know, I've always built like that, but recently. I've pretty much only been building full damage for like a while now. I haven't done any kind of bruiser build in like a while. Like, and when I say bruiser build, I mean like what they think of a bruiser build, which is like they want him to go cleaver, gore, titanic, like sterics, th those kind of items. I haven't done that kind of build on him in a while because it, it's terrible. Uh, for for you know, one the reason I said before about there being too much percent damage in the game, <clears throat> and two. A lot of those items are just not good, you know, like Gore Drinker is just not a good item. Like, what are, you, what are you supposed to do with that item? You know, it just gives you a bunch of health, no damage, vamp, which you don't need on Kled. Um, the active does no damage, like it's taken so many nerfs. And all it ever gets in exchange is health, which again, it just goes back to being like worse for you. You don't want to stack health, so it's like, why would you ever build an item? Nobody builds it. The only champ I can think of that goes Gore sometimes is like Set, who's like not even a good champ to begin with, really. Uh, and it's for like the same reasons <laughs> that these other champs don't build Bruiser because he needs to build HP generally, um, you know, for his W. But yeah, I just think it's weird. Plus, I also think it's weird because even when you look at the people who build Kled, like how they build Kled now, they don't even build full damage. Like on NA and on, on EU, there are a lot of like Ravenous, Eclipse, Kleds, and then more and more people are starting to go more to our Minder, which I've been doing for a while. Um, but if you look at other servers, like the Korean server and the Chinese servers, um, a lot of them still go Stride, Cleaver, Death Dance. Like, you can look at their top build and it's like all Stride, Cleaver, you know, Stride, Cleaver, Death Dance, Ma, like, Bruiser build. So I, even even with Kled, it's like, and Kled is such a low play rate champ. So I feel like it's like a non-issue, but whatever, whatever, right? Either way, let's just say they've made up their mind. And I think they've made up their mind because, um... You know, that post came out and then people were wondering, right? Because they list these champs and then they released a patch preview, which I'll look over in a second. Um, but in this patch preview, you can see Vi, Zin Zhao, Hecarim, and Aatrox, but there's no Kled. Kled is not in this patch preview at all. Um, so people were wondering if that was like a mistake, like why they include Kled here, but there's no changes. Um, but apparently a rioter on Reddit like confirmed, I don't know which rioter, but a rioter on like a Reddit post confirmed that Kled changes were still coming. Just not this patch, so maybe next patch. Or it might get like delayed or whatever, maybe they'll change their mind, you know, we don't know yet. But they, the, a rioter did say there are Kled changes coming, just not this patch. Um, some later patch. Um, but anyways, you know, so we don't know what the changes are yet, right? It could be anything. So, obviously, we gotta wait and see before I react for real. The only reason I made this video is because I'm genuinely nervous about what they're gonna do to Kled. And I have a few reasons to be nervous, but one reason is because, well, obviously, he's my favorite champion by far, you know? He's been my favorite champion for seven years. You know, they've done a lot of changes to other champs that have, in my opinion, made them less fun, less unique, you know? You know, they do that a lot. They, there's been a thing in the past few years, which is like really common for Riot, to make a champ, they like dumb champs down a lot. You know what I mean? Like they make champs easier to play, but just like, and usually the champs get better, but they're just less fun. You know, they'll, they'll make the champ just way more simplified. They'll take away their, their unique mechanics, the unique stuff that they have and just give them like, you know, just some stacking passive or just some percent damage somewhere, some execute damage, just some bullshit that like they don't need. And it just makes them good, but it's like they're not fun anymore. You know, or they just they feel they don't feel as good to play. Um, so that's one thing that makes me worried. And there's another reason I'm worried, which I'll show you in a second. But first, let's look over this preview um, because you might think, OK, well, we'll just look at, you know, what they what, what are they doing to these other champs that they mentioned? So maybe we'll have an idea of what they're going to do to Kled. That's what I was going to do. But the thing is, these changes are not like each other at all. Like they're completely different from each other. It doesn't seem like they follow any kind of like theme. And also, I don't even see how these, these are all adjustments to begin with. But first of all, Aatrox will just go in order. Aatrox, all they did to him is they made it so his passive auto attack, the percent HP, um, Deathbringer stance auto attack buff that he gets every once in a while, um, and his W, the chains, the infernal chains. They just made both of them deal magic damage instead of physical damage. Um, so all that is is a nerf. It just—it's literally just worse 
always, except for like early game, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It might be slightly better early levels because people have more armor than they have MR. Um, but it just gets way worse the more items he gets and the later they get because Aatrox is still gonna build full pen. Like this, this doesn't incentivize him to build Bruiser. Like it just makes his pen builds a little bit worse because uh, his Q is still the same, obviously, and his other autos, and he still gets a big AD buff on his R. Um, so it's not like you're gonna see this as an Aatrox player and you're like, damn, maybe I should go Gore Drinker now. Or Cleaver, which still would be worse because that's like Armor Shred. And this is, you know, magic. So I don't know what, what the hell this, this changes. All it is is a nerf, which is whatever, because I don't play Aatrox and Aatrox is pretty strong, so they're nerfing them fine. But this is listed as an adjustment, like with all these other ones. And speaking of the other ones, like, you know, let's just skip to Hecarim. Hecarim got a bunch of just irrelevant stuff. He got a bunch of mana changes, which don't matter because he's a jungler. And junglers, you know, the mana doesn't matter to them. You know, maybe you could say this is for like lane Hecarim. But like, whatever. You know, maybe they're trying to make Hecarim a laner again with these mana problems. Our mana changes, whatever, but for jungle Hecarims don't matter, and all they did with his W is just nerf it. Instead of being 25% vamp and then scale off of his AD, it's just 20% vamp the whole game. So, again, this doesn't change any of his damage or any of his, like, builds. He's gonna build exactly the same. So, I don't see how this, like, changes that at all. Uh, and then... We'll skip Quinn, we'll just go to Vi. Now, Vi got the... she got the best changes if you're a Vi player she's the only one that really got like hella buffed which is weird because again they're all listed as just adjustments but then you look at the vi changes and it's like okay her shield is just bigger you know there's no trade-off it's just two percent more hp uh, and then her passive which is every time she like uses an ability it like lowers her passive shield cooldown it refunds more now every time one second more every time you use an ability or hit an ability. So again, that's just buff straight up. Her E cooldown is just two seconds lower early game. That's it. So it's just a buff. And all she lost was her R damage is nerfed. So again, I don't see why this would make you build Bruiser. All it did was make your R do a little bit less damage, but the rest of your kit just got buffed. You're still going to build exactly the same. And again, all these champs are going to build the same because of what we talked about before, which is like why would you build all the bruiser items just stack a bunch of hp so then now you don't do that much damage and you're gonna get shredded anyway because there's too much percent damage all over the place hitting you you know it's untankable damage you're not gonna tank any of these 80 carry you know grouping in a team fight you're, you're not gonna be able to even get to in range of them without dying you're better off building damage and trying to one shot them you know by just positioning better or just being in a better spot or just snowballing um, and none of these changes, I think, do anything to change that at all. I don't see what, like, what the goal was here. Um, so yeah, you can, you can see that I'm lacking confidence in their ability to make these champs build a bruiser. The, th the thing is, they're, they're just, they're just wasting their time changing the champs, because the champs aren't the problem, it's the items. I mean, some champs are, have problems, obviously, but the reason the champs build damage is because of the items and the item system and just the way the meta is. Uh, post durability patch, post mythic item rework. It just doesn't make sense to build Bruiser. Like, these items that they have now don't benefit, you know, your game plan in the meta. Uh, and then Xin Zhao, his changes are irrelevant. His passive heals him basically more early game, less late game if you build full AD. But late game, your passive healing, if you build full AD, doesn't matter because you're instantly gonna die the second anything hits you. So I don't see what this has to do with anything. Like, like early game, mid game, you're not even going to notice a difference. And then late game, a full AD Zinzo would insta-die anyway to anything. So this healing doesn't matter. So this does nothing. It's not going to build any different. Plus Zinzo, it just sucks. Okay, then they changed some items. Now there's two, actually there's three Bruiser item changes here. Uh, the, the two main ones are Gore Drinker, Stride Breaker. Now what do you think they did, bro? This, first of all, this is listed as a buff to this Gore Drinker, which I mean, obviously it is a buff because it's just more of a stat. But it, what is the stat? It's 100 more health. It's the last thing I want. It's the last thing you want in the meta is more health. And this is just 100 more health. And then instead of uh, instead of call fields in the build path, it's it's whip, call fields, kindle gem. Instead of call fields, it's phage, which is a million times worse. And that's like another health item. And that sucks. You don't want a phage. Nobody wants a phage. Call fields is way better whatever you know that's just part of the build path but still 
it's like the build path got worse and in exchange you got more health nice and then strike breaker more health great you know you don't you, you literally don't want this like it as as somebody who plays cled like this would make me want to buy the items way less like i'm not looking at this and i'm like damn maybe i should pick up gore strike like now i want them even less than i ever wanted them before and i already don't want them and then the other change is to spear shojin they gave it a hundred a hundred and fifty more health uh and then they took away five ad and this is an adjustment it's listed as an adjustment which is weird feel like if those are considered buffs um five less ad 150 health i would think they would consider that a buff uh, and then they changed the passive a bit basically the passive is way better until you have 200 ad then it's even and 200 ad is a lot of ad that's like three four items um so there's only bonus ad not your total so you actually have to build it um so again i don't i don't even understand the point of this like if, if you build it early game, then it's just better. Uh, and if you build it later in the game, you're not even going to notice unless you have a shit ton of AD, and then it might be slightly worse. Uh, and then in exchange, you just get health, which is not really that good. I mean, Shoujin's a good item, and it's it's going to be good after this patch too, but I don't know. It's just like they, they don't understand what they're doing with like these items. They don't understand what a bruiser wants. They think, they think a bruiser player would look at this kind of stuff and be like... Let's fucking go, bro. Like, HP all over the place. HP on Gore, HP on Stride, HP on Shoujin. I'm like, they want you to get hype off that. And I'm like, damn, these items just got, like, worse. Like, I don't want to build these even more now. Um, so, I don't know. They, they just don't know what they're doing. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to look at, back to Kled. We were talking about, I was talking about, like, the game in general, bruisers in general, the meta in general. But back to Kled now. You know, there's no Kled changes here. Um... This is another reason that I'm nervous about the Kled. Honestly, one of the biggest reasons I'm nervous about the Kled changes. Uh, and it's right here. On the Kled mains subreddit, so I, I don't use Reddit that much, but when I do check, I sometimes check the Kled mains subreddit just because I like to see what people are talking about, you know, around Kled. Um, sometimes I answer questions, whatever, but I checked it a couple days ago and Freak, this is Freak's real account, you know, Riot Freak is on the balance team now. This is his first post in a month, too. I looked at his account. Uh, or, like, a year, my bad. This is his first post in a year. He comments all the time. This is his first actual post in a year. Um, and he went to the Kled main subreddit, and he asked them about what kind of changes... Like, how they feel about these changes right here. Um, which, you know, is nice. It's nice that, like, they're trying to talk to the players to see what they think. Because they could have just said, go fuck yourself, you know? Like, just put whatever changes they want. Like, they could have just put some of those changes that we just saw. Uh, and it, you might have been buffed, might have been nerfed, depending on the role. Like, you, like it's just RNG. What they think is an adjustment might be a buff, might be a nerf. But, you know, here he's actually talking to the club players, which is nice. And I'm going to personally try to talk to some riders to hopefully give some of my own suggestions. Like, if he has to get changed, that there's no choice. Like, if they're like, we're definitely changing them, and we're not changing our mind, then hopefully I can talk to a couple riders and give my own suggestions, but... We'll talk about that later. First, we'll talk about what Freak posted here. You know, you can already see it, but basically he asked, um, you know, Kled W, it's always been the way it is now. It's always been a passive. Like, it's 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 on. Like, it is an active, but you activate it by auto-attacking. So you can't, like, manually activate it, obviously. You can't press W and turn it on. It's just like, it's just like a regular ability, but the way you activate it is by autoing, and that goes on anything, any minions, tower, whatever. So you can't like hold it for later except for you know at the beginning of the game where you don't level it up yet which is like a pretty standard cled mechanic you know holding the point on your w um so he's saying what if you could just activate your w on command or or and or if you had more control of his ultimate steering his ultimate which i'm not sure what that would look like or how that would work or just you know being able to cancel the charge early and in exchange for those two things, they'd have to nerf him. I'm assuming nerf his damage, since that's what, like, the topic is about. Um, now, personally, before I look at the, like, you know, comments, personally, these are two of the worst <laughs> changes you could make. And I'll tell you why. Now, if, if you play Cut for a while, you can have your own opinion. And I want to know what you guys think. Um... You know, definitely tell me what you think about these changes. If these are not official, by the way, he's just suggesting them. What do you think about them? 
We don't know what they're actually going to do, but tell me what you guys think about these changes, assuming, you know, these happened, or what kind of changes you would want for Kled if they had to nerf his damage no matter what. Um, but the reason I meme these changes is because this has been like a running joke on my stream for like a long time. Um, like these are the kind of changes we joke about like, oh, if Riot ever did rework Kled, they'd probably do something goofy like this as like a joke. like. Even though, like, you know, joking that Ryo would do something that troll, but, like, surely they wouldn't do something like that. And the reason I think it's so dumb is because the whole point of his W ability, the whole point of his W ability is that you can't control it, you know, down to the name of the move. It's called Violent Tendencies. It fits Kled's whole theme. Sometimes he gets, you know, irrationally angry, gets the attack speed buff, attacks faster, stronger. It's the whole point of the move, is that you don't have full control over it. You have some control over it, but not full. Um, and not only does it fit the character perfectly, but it adds a lot of skill expression to the player, one. And two, it gives him a lot of counterplay. It's a very clear ability for the enemy. Like, there's no confusion. You know, when his W is ready, it lights up, it makes a sound, his autos make a sound. He has quotes for autoing on his W. It's a very clear ability, and then when it's down, his weapon dims, he's weaker for a bit, okay, you can punish him. Like, it's so straightforward. It's a perfectly designed ability, in my opinion. It's a perfect move, it fits his character, fits the gameplay, it's fair for the enemy, it's perfect. Doesn't need any changes, in my opinion. Activating the W, all that would do would be take away from the uniqueness uh, of the move, make him more generic, take away from the skill expression, make him easier and remove counterplay for the enemy. So all these changes are just negative and it also ruins the whole point of the move. You know, the whole gimmick of like, you know, it fits his personality or whatever. All that just gets thrown away. Like if you make it an actor. So I think that's really dumb. Uh, and then the other one, steering his ultimate, stopping it. Those are just random in my opinion. Like these are just unnecessary changes. Like, I, you know, I could easily say it also doesn't fit the character because you're supposed to be going in, you know, you're supposed to be full committed when you pressed R. You know, you decided you were going to go in there, so you, you know, you can't control it. Scarl's moving randomly. It's like kind of a goofy looking move. That's it, like, it doesn't need any weird changes like this. This is just some weird stuff, like making a steer, making you stop it. Like, now I have to believe in Riot's ability to code this, which I don't. <laughs> it, the move is one of the buggiest moves in the game by far. That move, I've played this champ for seven years, and sometimes I really don't know what's happening when I press R. The move doesn't work correctly all the time. It has a lot of bugs, and adding these mechanics, I'm sure would cause more bugs, which is like a lame thing to think about. Like, oh, well, it'll just make more bugs, but it's likely, so I have to think about it, because Kled always has bugs. Um, but this is just an unnecessary change, and I, you know, th these would be the lamest things to be counted as a buff to your champ. You know, the active W would definitely be better. Uh, the R stuff is just weird. You know, if those came in a patch and they said, yeah, these are buffs, and in exchange we nerf his damage, bro, I'd be so sad. You don't even understand. Because not only does it make the champ way less unique, way less fun, but then you just get nerfed on top of it, like nerf damage. So it's just like worse in both ways. So these are some of the worst changes I can think of. And that's what made me nervous for real. Because first I was just like, okay, let me just wait and see what they post. Then they posted the changes for the other champs, and I was a little like, okay, that's a little weird because some of these changes are horrible, some of them are good. and eat, But both ways, it's like, it doesn't change how the champions build at all, so I don't really understand what they're doing. And then when I saw this, I was like, bro, I was, well, I was like, it's fucked, <laughs> it's fucking doomed. Like, uh, this is just stupid. If, if these are their top two ideas, I'm, I don't have high hopes. But like I said, I'm going to try to talk to them myself. Hopefully I can suggest something. And, you know, obviously I'm only one person, but I feel like I have a good idea of, you know, what Kled players like and would want or like would accept a worst case scenario. It would be like an acceptable change. I don't think I would, you know, suggest anything that's actually just, you know, people wouldn't like. Um, you know, obviously I, I talk to a lot of Kled players and like, you know, a lot of Kled players come to my chat and talk to me. Um, so I feel like I have an idea of what would be good or bad for Kled. I think these two changes are terrible. Um, and then, you know, back to the comments, most people are, are, for the most part, pretty much everyone is saying, don't make his Kled W a toggle. You know, removes character from his character, removes skill expression. You know, having a W active dismantles the whole idea of the concept. You know, most people are saying that, you know, all of Zero's suggestions are really good if you want to read these comments on your own. Um, you know, this guy said, I like that you can miss your ult because it's like, it's skill expression, you know, that's the point of the game is that there's highs and lows, you know, 
and he, not every champ has that much skill expression so it's fun to play the champs that do have skill expression still because it feels good when you're doing good you know obviously it hurts when you mess up but that's part of the game part of the champ you know w being passive important aspect of his kit most people are saying the w definitely don't change it i feel like most people are also saying okay this guy's like i'll kill myself just do right, relax um, most people are saying they either don't care about his R changes or they don't like those R changes. So people are kind of like 50-50 on either not liking or not caring about the R changes. Uh, which again, I think goes back to what I said about it just being a random, unnecessary change. Just random. It's not really like a good or bad, it's just like, okay, like, I guess. Um, but his W being active, I think is just a negative all around, like in so many different ways. Um, so these, I think these changes are pretty bad. but. You know, these were just suggestions. You know, he was just asking, which is nice because maybe they won't go through now because maybe he'll see, you know, the clip player's response and maybe he'll be like, all right, maybe those weren't good. But that's what makes me worried because, yeah, what are they thinking of doing then? If, they, if they're going to change some kind of mechanics on him and then, you know, in exchange for that nerf him, I'm hoping they don't do anything lame like this. Anything that takes away from the fun of playing him. I'd rather, like, I'm being honest, I'd rather just straight up get nerfed and nothing in exchange than have something like this happen. Like, this, to me, is, like, the worst timeline, like, a change like this. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to do something to them. They're going to do something, I assume, unless they change their mind. Now, in my opinion, there's, like, a lot of things they could do um, that could, like, nerf his damage will also make him feel better to play. And I could talk about that for a long time. I'm just gonna say a quick like couple suggestions, but yeah, I feel like a really easy mode thing to do, like it would take two seconds to do, would be to just like revert his last one or two W buffs that he got. The last two W buffs he got, if you look at his patch history, uh, they just like lowered the cooldown of his W a couple times back to back. And even when it happened, I was like, this is kind of unnecessary, but you know, they could revert those buffs in some way, make his W cooldown a little bit longer. Uh, because as it is now, there's so much haste in the game. Like, a after the laning phase, you don't think about his W that much anymore. Because it gets down to such a low cooldown because of the buffs. So that might contribute to, like, them saying, oh, it's too much damage or whatever. So, like, you could revert that. And in exchange, like, what they should do, they probably don't want to do something like this. But they need to get rid of the stupid mechanic on his passive. It's the one part of Kled's kit that makes no sense, and it's his dismounted auto attacks. Uh, if you don't know, when you're dismounted, your auto attacks deal 20% less damage. I don't know why that's a thing, because everything else in his kit points to you like... You're supposed to want to fight when you dismount, like you're not really able to run. You're not good at running away. You know, you're slow as hell, unless you're towards enemies. You, know, you get more range on your auto attacks. But, you know, you lose your E, lose your R, you're really squishy. But, you know, if you fight, you can get your health back. So you're supposed to be incentivized to fight and not run. But then when you fight, you deal 20% less damage with your auto attacks. And half of your damage is your auto attacks when you're dismounted. So it just seems weird that he still has that. I'm, I'm positive it's just an outdated mechanic. You know, even Callista, who only had 10% less damage on her autos, even she got that mechanic removed. And she's way more auto-reliant you know just in general but yeah i think if they they like reverted some of his w bus but gave him that that would be like a two second change that'd be really easy to do and like i don't think that'd be bad i think that'd be good um and if they wanted to do something else but oh yeah before i say something else i'm sure they won't do that because that would technically give him more damage i guess uh, because it would be increasing his passive damage I don't know how you, you can't make him build Bruiser, you know, this obviously goes back to what I said before, but you can't make him build Bruiser unless you just make his kit like disgustingly overloaded to the point where he has no reason to build damage because his kit is just so broken. Like the way he is now, his only purpose is to deal damage, he doesn't have any utility. So you have to build damage. If you build a Bruiser, you don't do any damage and you have too much HP. So I don't know how you would make him build Bruiser. Uh, the only way would be like, if you give him a bunch of resist somehow, like if you made it so his ultimate gave him like passive armor and MR, like every time you ranked up his R. But even then, that would only make him build Bruiser once they fix the Bruiser items. Then that would be really good. But as of right now, you'd still just build full damage and just benefit from the armor and MR like Hecarim. 
like Hecarim has it, they gave Hecarim armor and MR and his W uh, to hopefully make him build more Bruiser, and they still just build damage anyway, because what, what Bruiser items are you going to go? Like, I, I don't know what they think. The, the best Bruiser item is like Holebreaker, because it gives you a shit ton of AD, move speed, and a shit ton of resist, most importantly. Uh, because the item gives you so much health, the fact that it gives you so much armor and MR it makes the health good. Like, it makes it efficient, not, not a waste of the stat. Uh, just having a bunch of flat health does nothing good for you. You know, unless you have health scaling, like on set W or something. So, you know, maybe they'll give him health scaling, but I don't think they would do that. I don't know. I don't think he needs any changes, but if he was going to get changes, I think changing his passive and then nerfing damage elsewhere or whatever. You know, if they nerfed his ult damage... Because the way Kled is now, like, when you when you do build full damage Kled, if you do that, which not that many people do, but I do, and some people do, if you build full damage on Kled full pen, as soon as you get to, like, mid late game, you quickly turn into just, like, a gimmick where you just try to ult one-shot people, like, for, like, a pick, like, a solo pick or a solo dive, because you can't really team fight with them. Um, so I could see them nerfing his ult damage, but then I would hope they would give him something in exchange, obviously. And they could give his ult more utility. Um, you know, it's been like a pretty common suggestion for a while. Like maybe his ult could give him some kind of buff or give your team some kind of buff. Um, but I mean, that'd be kind of weird. But like, I wouldn't be mad if that happened, if it was like interesting. But the best thing a buff could give you is like damage. They're probably not going to give him more damage. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Obviously, armor pen would be great. But again, that'd be more damage. Like, I don't, I don't know what they expect. The, the problem with the game is the item system and the meta, just in general. And it seems like they want to do another durability patch. Like, I don't know how much worse it could get. But I, like, I, I've, I've been somebody who's pretty much not cared about Riot's, like, balancing forever. Like, for all the years I've played League, I could pretty much play without caring about the balancing at all. Like, it didn't matter. Sometimes they did good stuff, sometimes they did stupid things. But honestly, it didn't matter for the regular player 90% of the time. You know, some metas were more annoying than others, but gen generally I could just do whatever I wanted to do and it would work. Like, it didn't matter. If I made something work, it would work. I didn't have to, like, you know, change everything completely for the meta. So I didn't really care that much. But the durability patch and the mythic item reworks were the two patches that, like, just made the game way worse. And, like, way harder to balance for them. Especially the way they look at the game. You know, going back to this post. Like, there's a, there's, a, there's a part in this post right here where they say that top lane and bot lane are close in power level agency. Now, I don't know... Obviously, people always say they're playing a different game than us. I don't know what game they're playing because I don't know where this is even true. I mean, maybe in, like... I don't even know. Like, maybe in super low elo? But I don't even think that's true. Like, I don't know where top and bot lane are considered close in power level and agency. I mean, bot lane and jungle are the entire game. It's not an exaggeration. The entire game pretty much revolves around the jungler and the bot lane. Um, you know, they've, they've nerfed top lane and mid lane solo impact a lot. The best thing you can do as a mid laner is roam bot. The best thing you can do as a top laner is roam bot every time. Like, playing for solo advantage, solo kills is, is generally the worst thing you could do. If you, if you could have just roamed bot. Like, that's a much better option every time. So I don't know what they think of this top and bot lane close in power level. I mean, maybe they're saying because the bot laners themselves are not the ones like doing the ganking, but it, it amounts to the same thing because if the bot laners are strong, if your bot laners are strong, you're probably going to win the game. So the lane is like the power level. Um, so they'd have to do way more changes. Like they're in their mind, they're like, oh, it's the champions that are the problem. Like recently they've been buffing top laners too. Bro, there's plenty of good top lanes. The top laners are not the problem. The champions themselves are not bad. There's there's a lot of broken top laners in the game. Like recently they buffed Camille. They uh, like buffed Aatrox and then nerfed him. They buffed Gwen a bit. You know, they just try like buffing top laners and then now they're trying to like change top laners. You know, slash like bruiser champs that might be jungle lanes. Trying to change some items, but it's not like it's not going to fix anything. The lane is the problem with top lane. And the whole durability thing, I mean, I just think it's stupid. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't think these changes are... The, everything they said here, I pretty much disagree with. 
and then the upcoming changes to like these champs that they listed wherever they were I think don't make any sense don't change how they're gonna build and then the potential cled changes didn't sound good hopefully they end up doing something else hopefully I can suggest something or they like see what people are saying like that cled that actually play cled and they'll change their mind but hopefully they see what the real problem with the game is and it's they're not going to <laughs> they're not going to i don't even need to talk about that they're not gonna do anything that's gonna go against a durability patch and they're definitely committed to that idea well either way let me know what you guys think you know obviously if they post anything about cled any actual changes on the pv or whatever which probably be next patch so in a few days the next patch will come out so then after that There'll be some kind of patch preview, some stuff on the PB, and then we'll see if Kled gets anything new. Um, then I'll talk about that again, obviously I'll have another video for that. But I'm going to be talking about it on stream a lot in the next few streams, so if you have any questions, like, in real time, I can answer you there. Um, but also just tell me your opinion, like, in the comments, you know, what you think about all this, and what you would do to Kled. Um, you know, I'm, and I'm sure a lot of people like it, you know, I'm sure a lot of people think opposite of me i might be the outlier like you might think there is too much damage and you're glad there's like another durability patch kind of thing coming in um so maybe you have a different idea of what they would do to cled than i do but yeah just tell me what you guys think and yeah that's it for now we'll see we'll see what comes up in the future